Our gathering hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Beginning with verse 5. O come, desire of nations, bind in one the hearts of all humankind. Bid thou our sad division cease, and before us our King of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Amen. you well shall come to you, O Israel. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. My sisters and brothers, it's still Advent. I just want to point that out. But let us prepare ourselves now to celebrate these holy mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came once to share our humanity. Lord, have mercy. You come to us in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in your love. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory for salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all one day into his own everlasting life. My brothers and sisters, let us pray that we might be ready for the coming of Christ. O Lord our God, in your great kindness, hear the prayers of your people. May we who celebrate the coming of your only begotten Son as a human being come to share in the gift of life when he returns to us at last in glory. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Song of Songs. Hark, my lover, here he comes springing across the mountains leaping across the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Here he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattices. My lover speaks. He says to me, arise, my beloved, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. For see, the winter is past. The rains are over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of pruning the vines has come, and the song of the dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines, in bloom, give forth fragrance. Arise, my beloved, my beautiful one, and come. O oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the secret recesses of the cliff, let me see you, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet, and you, are lovely. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm. Exult, you just, in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Exult, you just, in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. Sing to him a new song. 
pluck the strings skillfully with shouts of gladness. Exalt, you just, in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. But the plan of the Lord stands forever, the design of his heart through all generations. Bless the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. Exalt, you just, in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. For in him our hearts rejoice. In his holy name we trust. Exalt, you just, in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. The Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel, the Good News, according to Luke. Mary set out in haste and traveled to the hill country to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, the infant within her leapt for joy. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But how does this happen that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For the moment your greeting sounded in my ear, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who trusted that the Lord's words to her would be fulfilled. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. One of the many themes in Luke's gospel is the fact that Jesus is surrounded at the very beginning of his life with people who were prophetic. You know, and so none of us should be surprised that Jesus is the great prophet of the end times. He's the one who comes and speaks for God because as we will discover as the story unfolds, not only does he speak for God, but he is God speaking to us. But if you look at the story, the whole nativity story in Luke's gospel, you know, look at the people that surrounded him. You know, there was Zechariah, who was a little slow on the uptake, but eventually he caught on. You know, it would be at John the Baptizer's circumcision, his name day, that John was his name. And when Zechariah wrote that on the tablet, all of a sudden, he who had seen the angel Gabriel but doubted what was said was finally able to speak once more. His name is John. Elizabeth, right from the very beginning, is a prophetess. I mean, here we have Mary coming to her. Mary, who had met the angel Gabriel just a little while before that, probably maybe a month or so, because she came down from Nazareth to, to Judea, which was not an easy journey, and she would have had to come down with a caravan. So it would have taken her a little bit of time to get down there, but remember the angel Gabriel had told her that her kinswoman, Elizabeth, was pregnant. But she was already in her sixth month, so Mary goes down to help her. And when she gets there, Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, says, Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Blessed is she who trusted that the Lord's words to her would be fulfilled. And the baby in her womb, John the baptizer, was certainly a prophet as well. And then we know as the story unfolds, before it closes, we'll have Jesus being taken to the temple for the presentation, it was the law of Moses that every firstborn male needed to be given back to God, and that the parents had to redeem the child by offering something in the child's place. And so in the case of Mary and Joseph, who were not wealthy people, it was just a pair of turtle doves. 
the smallest gift that could be given to redeem a son. But when they go there to do what they were supposed to with the thousands of people that entered the seven different gates into the temple, all of a sudden we'll hear about Anna and Simeon, both of them a prophet and a prophetess. They recognize Jesus, this child in a mother's arms, when there were probably hundreds of mothers bringing their sons to the temple. They recognize him. Simeon singles them out and says, now, Lord, you can dismiss your servant in peace, for I have seen the promised one. And Anna does the same thing. You know, Jesus was surrounded by these prophetic people. And so why should we be surprised that Jesus would be the one who not just speaks for God, but is God speaking to us? It is a story that truly is a wonderful story. But the line that I love is that line of Elizabeth who looks at this young girl who's come to help her and says, blessed is she who trusted that the Lord's words to her would be fulfilled. You know, you and I are blessed people. We've known, all of us or most of us, from the time we were a little kid, the story of Jesus. We've known about his promise and the hope that he offers to us. That's been something that we've grown up with. You know, how many Christmases have we celebrated over the years? How many times have we celebrated the birth of the coming of Christ into this world that God chose to share our humanity? How many times have we done that? And, you know, sadly, it can get a little old. I remember parents one time saying to me, well, you know, Father, Christmas doesn't mean much anymore because the kids are all grown and gone, and so, you know, it doesn't mean as much. And I thought, wow. Christmas is about kids. No, it's about something much greater than that. And somehow, the focus, they, they miss that. I mean, at a point in their life that they should have been even more amazed at the story of Christmas. You know, they didn't have to worry about the tinsel and the decorations and the presents and all the chaos that can come with Christmas when you have young kids. And when they had the, the peace and the time to ponder what was happening, to ponder the meaning of it, uh, it didn't mean a whole lot to them anymore. It just kind of broke my heart, actually, that somehow Christmas wouldn't mean much to them. When, really, as I've gotten older, it means a whole lot more to me than it ever did. You know, I'm not going to be excited like a little kid. I'm more like that when it comes to Easter, but that's another whole homily. I'm not going to be excited, but you know, I'm going to be content. Because the thought that God would come and share our life with all of its difficulties, its trials, its hopes, its joys, that God would come and be one with us. What a wonderful thing. But it's not just that he did that once. He does that now. He'll come to us again. He comes to us in his word, and in a few minutes he'll come to us in the gift of his body so that he can be one with us. What a wonderful gift. And it all began at Christmas. It's a reason to celebrate. Not perhaps with the excited joy of a little one, but with the contented joy of one who's grown old enough to understand the meaning. For blessed is he or she that trusted that the Lord's words to them would be fulfilled. We're just a few days away from celebrating that once more. And that's reason for joy. Let us turn to the Lord now in prayer for all those in need of God's care this day. 
that the Holy Spirit may fill the church with joy at the coming of Christ this Christmas. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's wisdom may lead policymakers in their work of defending the sanctity and dignity of all life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's comfort and abiding presence may fill the hearts of those who are lonely or depressed during the holiday season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may have a place in the hearts and homes of those of us gathered here. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially Evan Saturnino, for whom this Mass is offered, may be welcomed into God's loving embrace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion. We praise and thank you for the gift of Jesus, your son, who came to share our humanity so that we might share your own divine life. Father, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of Christ. And we ask that you give us the wisdom to welcome him even more fully into our lives this Christmas so that we might know the hope and the joy that he alone can give. We ask this through Christ our Lord. My sisters and brothers, please pray that your sacrifice and mine may be truly acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O Lord our God, be pleased to accept the offerings of your church, gifts which you first give, gave to us in your great mercy. Now by your power, transform them into the gift of our salvation. Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For all the prophets of old foretold his coming. The Virgin Mother longed for him and bore him in a womb beyond all telling. John the Baptizer was his herald, and made him known when at last he came. It is by his saving grace even now that we rejoice in the great wonder at his birth. When he comes again in glory, may he find us watchful in prayer, our hearts filled with wonder and awe. And so with all the saints and angels, we proclaim your glory, Father, as we say, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty Father, we praise you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you stretch out to sinners, the way that leads to your peace. Father, when we had wandered far from you through sin, you brought us back through Jesus, your Son. He willingly gave himself up to death so that we might turn again to you find our way to one another. Now, Father, we celebrate the reconciliation Christ has gained for us. We ask you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Consecrate them to become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
from the night he was betrayed before he willingly handed himself over. While at table with his disciples, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup and again gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We proclaim this great mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Holy Father, we now celebrate this memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son. He left us this pledge of his love so that we might offer to you the gift you've given to us, the perfect sacrifice of reconciliation. Father, we ask you to accept us together with your Son. Fill us with this Holy Spirit, and through our sharing in this sacred meal, may he take away everything that divides us. May the same Holy Spirit keep us always in a great communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Earl, our Bishop, and all your people. Father, make your church throughout the world a sign of unity and the servant of your peace. For you gathered us here together around the table of your Son, in fellowship with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with St. Mark, the blessed apostles, and all the saints, and our departed brothers and sisters, whom we commend to your mercy. In that new world where the fullness of your peace will be revealed, gather people of every race and language and way of life to share in the one great eternal banquet of life through Christ Jesus our Lord. For it is through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Together we pray the prayer of God's children as the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Father, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your great mercy, help us to live free from sin. Keep us safe from all anxiety as we await the blessed hope of the coming again in glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant to all of us a share in the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be with you. Amen. As a sign of the communion we share in Christ, we share first Christ's peace. Lamb of God, This is the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. Truly blessed are we made one in him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O Lord our God, may our participation in this divine mystery bring your enduring protection to your people. May we be dedicated to your service and know health of body, mind, and spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration of this Eucharist is ending so that we might go with Christ to the world. Soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Alleluia, alleluia, we're going to see the king. No more crying there, we are going to see the king. No more crying there, we are going to see the king. No more crying there, we are going to see the king. Alleluia, alleluia, we're going to see the king.